road map on under development but the main pro tip which i would say which has really helped my career grow exponentially is read open source code if you mm-hmm. ask a web developer what is a dependency injection most of them don't know that if you ask a web developer uh, what what are solid principles of clean code most of them don't know that i have cracked uh, two full time offers at router uh, that is in which uh, i am working and another at gfg as an android developer hey everyone welcome back to another episode of the developers cafe podcast in this episode i am in conversation with siddharth sharma he has cracked two full time offers as an android developer at the router app and gfg but before we get started please press like share and subscribe so that this video can reach more and more number of people all right enjoy this one Hi Siddharth, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine man. What about you man? I'm great. Siddharth, can you tell the listeners first of all about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Siddharth. I am of the class uh, 2023 and I would consider myself as a native Android developer. And I am currently an SD1 in Router Sports which is a like exponentially growing startup. I have cracked uh, two full-time offers at Router uh, that is in which uh i'm working on another art gfg as an android developer awesome so that my first question to you is how did you get into android development i mean that did you try web versus android or did you just straight away knew that you had to go into android no i just went straight into the android actually <laughs> this is a real funny kind of story uh when i when my college was about to start like in the first year when i took admission in my college The only technology I knew was native Android. That's it. And I took a Udemy course of that. Uh, and yeah, I just started that. And later on, I found out that there is also a thing called machine learning, which students can also do. I thought that that was a kind of a rocket science which we cannot do. Uh, but yeah, and then I later found out that there is also something named as backend. But uh, I guess mobile development is more fascinating to me. uh because of i would say gps stuff i think gps is a very cool kind of a thing this brings me to my next question did you choose android versus ios or was it was it an easy choice for you to go with android actually the when i started native android i was like doing that for a couple of months on my pc and it was <laughs> hell for me so couldn't really do ios ios development on that but yeah sometimes i have i have kind of a certain urge to switch to ios also uh, and i i doing ios development is also cool i think but um, mm. yeah so maybe maybe i will consider doing that in my future so now i want to ask you that what was the first app that you ever built because students feel like they need to straight away go into fancy stuff and build big big apps so can you please tell what was the first app app i made was i guess it was kind of a rolling die so you just uh, press a button and it will show a image of a die that's it it is in, it was in java so which language did you choose to start off with because if a student wants to start with android development there's plenty of languages right there's react native there's flutter there's java there's kotlin so how did you choose your language and how would you suggest a new beginner to choose his language yeah so basically if you want to go into the native android development there are only two languages which is java and kotlin and in that i would say if you if you know c++ uh, like if you're doing dsa or stuff and you know c++ from that uh, you can switch to java very easily from c++ to java it's a very easy shift and then from java to kotlin it's also a very easy shift so you can transition that way i have did the transition myself and that was if you if you uh, go into an interviewer interview or ask Okay, uh, what is what is your favorite language? You'll say Kotlin because most of the developers say Kotlin, and then he'll say why why do you like Kotlin? So then you will have no answer. So what I would say is first learn Java, uh, learn its pros and cons, and then yeah, shift to Kotlin. So that if a new beginner is listening to us, can you please give him a proper roadmap about how he should approach his Android development journey so that he can be as successful as anyone else in the community right now? uh yeah so you can find the road map 
there are thousands of road map on android development but the main pro tip which i would say which has really helped my career grow exponentially is read open source code uh, yeah. and it is a like <laughs> i have learned this tip after very hit and trial kind of a thing and so first you can start by learning uh, java or just you can directly go ahead and buy a udemy course or there is all too many courses or on udacity uh, which are provided by google on android they are free uh, you don't have to buy that and yeah they are a very good course and also uh, they are kind of deprecated so what you what the hard work you have to do yourself is basically go ahead and stack overflow the things the new things which are deprecated so if an if an api is deprecated you have to stack overflow it yourself and find out the new stuff so that way you will be a very good android developer and uh, you will basically enhance your googling skills too and you can also buy udemy course uh udemy instructor which i would recommend for advanced developers too is uh vasili zukanov uh so basically you can buy his course of multi threading they are, they are basically of advanced concepts and uh you can buy his course of android architecture core routines actually there are two main stuff in android mm-hmm. so also think there is no exact road map to learn anything basically what you have to struggle with is uh getting to know what you have to learn so what you can do that uh for that you can do is go on the official documentation and first of all just make a habit of reading official documentation i know so in the documentation too there are kind of snip, uh, snippets in which uh, you can see directly the code but what i would recommend is don't create a habit to just directly uh, jump on to the snippet read the uh, english also too uh, which uh, the line that description that explains the code that is basically the kind of a pro tip which i would say and yeah so like like again you don't have to follow a uh, road map exactly but you just need to know what you have to learn and there are okay. like too many things which you can learn and you can mm-hmm. I, i will literally say you can become a professional developer if you read everything open source so that i want to ask you that how do you break down a project because if you start off it can be pretty intimidating with the app that you have to build you have to build so many pages so many functionalities so how do you break down a project first of all you have to like uh, focus on a ux and from that uh, you can jump into the first of all like you have to design a code on a very high level like uh, should even consider an architecture uh, if you should consider an architecture what will you use mvvm or mvp viper or mvc like that kind of a thing do you need dependency injection are you going to write unit tests for that are you going to write ui or integration tests for that and yeah also one more pro tip here just write test cases for your app that was uh you don't have to think of breaking down anything the test will force you to break down the things and it it will be very intuitive for you to build a feature so yeah that, uh, that is what i would recommend uh, if you need a dependency injection then you have to do that from the starting and you can also use service locator pattern to create an object map and yeah so basically if you if you write unit test for your app Uh, or uh, the whole three test three level of test you don't have to think too much of uh, breaking down uh, the things for a app so that do you think that android development is difficult than web development i know that you don't have any personal experience uh, android is, to my yeah. friends i would say android development has uh, basically more software development ish kind of concept like if you ask a web developer what is a dependency injection most of them don't know that if you ask a web developer uh, what what are solid principles of clean code most of them don't know that and yeah so basically these these kind of a software develop, developer ish kind of things only android developer knows and it is not that they are not used in web they are used in web but they doesn't have that much significance as they have in android and also the learning curve of native android specifically is i think too steep for freshers so mm. if if most of my friends who started native android development texted me after 3 days like you are nahi ho raha mere se and yeah so it is kind of a steep and 
the most irritating part in uh, native android development which web don't have are irritating and a very slow build cradle error so mm-hmm. basically like in the router if i go ahead and build my project it will take around 10 to 11 minutes if you even change one line and uh, build the project it will take 10 to 11 minutes to build so yeah and native android is kind of irritating but majorly the mature con- concepts which you can see uh, you uh, you will go ahead and uh, learn in native android which which you will uh, not do so in web development so now you have cracked two full time op- offers from router app and gfg so i want to ask you that how has your experience been like how has your evolution been like how were you in your initial stages of learning and how are you now what difference do you feel in yourself uh so before giving my first interview in the router i would say i was not at par with the industry standards uh but yeah after after uh getting my hands on on a big life project and router is kind of a big life project it's a, it has more than 35 million downloads on play store and the user base is very very big so after that i learned too many things uh, like how to write clean code how to write more loosely coupled code and before uh, what i would say before uh, getting my hands on in the router what i did was if i if something hit, uh, if some solution just hit my mind i would go ahead and uh, start uh, would start coding that mm-hmm. but now what i will do is i will think okay so how can i iterate towards a much great uh, good solution or even even sometimes what i do i create a high level design of that code on a paper and i would think that okay can i inject this in, can i inject this use case into this class or what if what if some other developer need to read this how how can i improve my code so yeah so i would say before 4 or 5 months i was a, i was not at par with the industry standard but after getting my hands on on the a uh, good uh, good app a good uh, big life project uh, so i can i think that i am i can say myself as a native android developer finally siddharth can you please share some resources for the students who are listening to us so that they can begin their android journey uh yeah sure so uh, what i would recommend is if you not if you are not getting official documentation which will like happen to you thousand times the documentation is like really not that readable so what you can do is you can refer code labs uh, which is of google only they provide a 101 uh, kind of a thing like step by step what code you should write uh, code labs you can you can see on their official documentation and you can follow udacity course of android it is a very good course and uh yeah you can again read some open source code mm-hmm. awesome advice so that finally can you play my a to z speed test yeah yeah sure 